Welcome to the Radical Generosity webinar, y'all. The countdown is over and we are here with you live on a Wednesday at noonish. Oh my gosh, we had about 200 people registered for this webinar and I'm so grateful that you took the time to really join us on this very significant topic that we are going to unpack. I am Lily Meshi and I serve at Iran Alive Ministries right alongside Dr. Shariat, the founder of Iran Alive Ministries. Dr. Shariat, yes, he is joining us on Zoom. He is part of our panel and um, we have some of the greatest leaders of generosity and experts on the generosity space with us on this webinar today. Joined um, by um, J uh, Patrick Johnson. He is the founder of Generous Church. Patrick, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today, sir. We are so grateful that you were able to join us today. Yeah, I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you for the work you do, and it's my pleasure to talk about this topic, which is for all of us. Thank you. I appreciate you, Patrick. Um, next, we have Kyle Negretti. Kyle is an enthusiastic, passionate young man. That's uh, He's an entrepreneur and investor. He wakes up every day wanting to spread the message of generosity everywhere he goes. Kyle, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. I'm, I'm deeply honored. And Lily, I may have to just have you travel with me wherever I go to introduce me because I've not been introduced like that. In <laughs> oh, my God. Very That's long. awesome. Well, that is absolute, the, the absolute truth. And we are honored to know you. And last but not least, we have our very own Luke Haddon. Luke Haddon with all things generosity related. No, seriously, he is the very example that we all need in the body of Christ. He has been an example. He embodies generosity every place he goes to. He, um, he honors the Lord by his generous heart through his resources, his talents, his time. And he, we had to have him on this call because he just embodies generosity. Luke, welcome. Thank you for being with us today. Thanks for having me. I love Iran Alive. I love your team, and I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you for being an advocate of Iran Alive Ministries and standing by us through it all. All right, guys. So what you may you may be asking, those of you that um, are joining us, Lily, like y'all are Iran Alive Ministries. You share the gospel with Iranians and Farsi-speaking people. What are you doing holding a webinar on generosity? Well, the answer is, it's all kingdom related. We all are called as believers to live out a generous life and to be just like our father, to resemble his character. And to be honest, uh, what happened was um, in the beginning of this year, as a ministry, we were so stirred up about really helping our members, our network, our people uh, with um, really making a shift, a mindset shift about giving. We wanted to really um, emphasize more about giving is not so much out of obligation in the kingdom of God, but it is an opportunity to partner up with God through whatever it is that we're doing, not even just in our finances, but also through our talents, through the resources that we have been entrusted with. And so as we were praying with Dr. Shariat and the ministry team about how do we bring this message of generosity in a very systematic way for Iranians and Farsi speaking people that are coming into their new faith, into Christianity with a Muslim background to where giving is solely based on obligation out of fear really, but not out of a grateful heart to where we would be bubbling up with joy and gratefulness and thankfulness. Lord, what is it that we can help you with? It's all yours. Let's do this together and let's expand the kingdom of God together. So we were stirred up about this and some of our um, supporters, some of our donors, some of our uh, ministry friends actually reached out to us and they were like, 
hey, it's on our heart to hold a uh, seminar at um, Iran Alive Ministries for um, some of your staff and some of the ministries partners. Can we do that? We were like, oh my gosh, we've been praying about this. Yes. So we partnered with Generous Giving. Jay Paul, who was also supposed to be here, he is up in the air, 30,000 feet above ground right now. He had to travel. Uh, but anyways, he facilitated that seminar for us. And we felt the shift is real. The Lord wants to do something among in our own ministry. And also among Iranians. And we, we were like, okay, if we want to cause a generosity movement in Iran, we need to be a part of a global movement of generosity. So that's why we have some of the leaders and the experts in the generosity space today with us, um, such as Patrick Johnson, Dr. Sherriot. Dr. Sherriot has been in the ministry for over 40 years. His life exemplifies a life of a generous believer. Dr. Sherriot, could you share with us some of the uh, personal experiences that you have had um, and, and really um, use generosity as an example for us how, and how you have applied it in your own life. Well, I want to thank everyone and all our guests to be here. And uh, I, have, I don't consider myself a generous person. I just uh, loving the Lord, uh, you know, the two commandments, love the Lord and love others. I think that naturally leads us to be generous with our, not just finances, but our time our talents. So I got saved and I that was natural for me to give my life. Uh, one way was to give up my career in uh, AI. I have a PhD in artificial intelligence and had I was re doing research with a great, uh, great salary. But uh, when I Iran opened up and I the Lord told me that the, the kingdom in Iran, his kingdom in Iran will progress. That was a major shift and I'm not uh, sad about it. It's, uh, I'm joyfully did that. And throughout the years, uh, God has used me, uh, mostly receiving generosity for others. But I'm proud to say I'm one of the top donors even in uh, at Iran Alive. So uh, I think it's natural. It comes with the love for the Lord, love for the people, and putting kingdom first. Absolutely. Well, thank you for what you have done. I myself am a fruit of your ministry. Your ministry helped me grow in my faith, my parents as well. It is through your generous um, lifestyle that you left all that behind you, being a researcher in the AI and um, having your PhD, your degree, setting all that aside and to dedicate your life um, to share the gospel with us Iranians that are Farsi speaking. Thank you for that. Patrick, I am going to come to you and I would like to ask you, sir, how do you define radical generosity? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, also a very robust question. Uh, I think it starts with who God is. When, uh, when I think of generosity and radical generosity, I think you have to start with who God and the very nature of God. That's right. Right. You know, when Paul was raising funds in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, he sort of held up Jesus as the pinnacle of radical generosity, that though he was rich, yet for our sake, he became poor mm -hmm. so that we through his poverty might become rich. 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 is one of my favorite verses on generosity. And I often get people to think, how rich was Jesus? <laughs> right? He Everything was created by him and for him and through him and in him, all things hold together. That's so right. all the wealth. And how poor did Jesus become? I mean, he was born among, in a manger, among animals. He was misunderstood, mistreated, mocked, shamed, crucified. So you think ultimate wealth to ultimate poverty, that is radical generosity. And why did he do it? Why did he do it? So that we, through his poverty, might become rich. So I think radical generosity, the definition You've got to go to the very nature of God. It's That's who right. God is. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, Patrick, how do we as believers um, follow the same example and follow in Jesus' footsteps? Yeah, you know, I do a lot of global training on generosity. And the first thing we have to do is to get rid of the perception that it's all just for wealthy people. That's <laughs> you right. You know, that it may be you for the West. It may be you 
but this is for everyone. And the most generous people I know that are living radically generous are not in the West. Mm -hmm. They're in the Middle East. I mean, I, I ministered among some in Turkey last year and I got to deal with, you know, just beautiful people and they are so generous. So I think you have to tear down the perception that it's about money and it's all about money. Um, and then I think the second thing is you have to be united to Christ. I think it's exactly what our uh, doctor said, our brother said, is that, you know, this starts out of being united with God. It's a fruit of your relationship with God. So I think true generosity starts when we're united with Christ and it's an overflow of our relationship with Christ. That's right. I truly believe that. And we, we, we see that in the Bible, in Acts 4, how even believers became so united in mind and heart and brought all their possessions, everything that they had for the furtherance of the kingdom of God. Um, do, um, I want to ask you, Kyle, do we see this type of radical generosity today in the Big C Church? And if not, why not? Yeah, I think it's a great question. Um, I think that the church, I think God has positioned the church at large uh, for a new wave of radical generosity. Um, but in that, I think the American church at large, um, you know, I think that we have forsaken the, the great commandment for the great commission. Mm. And in doing so, we're oftentimes winning people to a Jesus we're not even friends with. And I think that that's a, a real challenge that I see. But if we if if the blueprint for generosity is the yearly church, right, where there every every need was met, I think about poverty being illegal in our communities. Like, what would that look like? It would. It's actually illegal yeah. for anyone around us, our brothers and our sisters, to live in lack. What would that movement look like? And I and I believe that there is a movement happening. Uh, which is, I think, one of the reasons why we're on this call is this inflection point of we have to do something about this. Mm -hmm. And what does that actually look like? And I think when we when we look at growing in generosity, right, what I have found in my own life is that it's actually growing in a freedom against fear. Like I want I want to I want to sow things into the kingdom that cost me something. And I think in you know, the church in the West has just become really, really comfortable. Um, but there are amazing movements happening all over the world, and I believe that that's why we're here. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Luke, I'm going to go to you. Um, you are very um, um, uh, versed about sacrificial generosity, and um, I know that we talked. We just talked about um, radical generosity, and Patrick um, helped us really unpack what is radical. You know, it's like going from wealth to poverty. It's that extreme. Um, what, how do you define sacrificial generosity? All right. Well, you know, not to oversimplify it, but it does come back to what Patrick and Kyle were saying around spending time with the Lord. I mean, that's the advantage of this God we serve is he wants to collaborate with us. He wants to teach us his ways. And so I think my first thought towards that is, are we desperate for the presence of God? Are we desperate to be acquiring his personality traits? Are we desperate to be good at what he's good at? Are we taking on the yoke of Jesus? And so when you start to do that, sacrificial generosity will eventually become more natural. Now I say it that way because it's a learning experience for all of us. This is a struggle that, you know, we on the phone here might be called experts, but we are far from expert. We are learning alongside you and struggling and wrestling with the Lord in this because relying on his faithfulness is not easy, especially in the West. Um, we don't want to rely on his faithfulness. We want to rely on ourselves. That's what's natural. And like David says, like, teach me your ways, O Lord, so that I may learn to rely on your faithfulness. So we, as the New Testament church, with the Holy Spirit, we get to learn and collaborate and grow and be sanctified. And that's a struggle, but it does teach us his way of sacrificial generosity. And 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 then post Jesus with with Paul, we see that with the Macedonian church is this sort of approval and this praising of the Macedonian church in Second Corinthians, saying out of their extreme poverty yes. and their affliction, they gave all that they could and they 
begged to give more. They wanted to be a part of this because they saw that, hey, I get to experience the character of Jesus. And when I experience the character of Jesus, I get to know it and become, that's experiential knowledge, right? Right. And so out of that place of desperation, out of that place of poverty, they were able to sacrifice. It hurt, but they did it cheerfully and they begged for more because they saw the fruits. The verses, remember the Lord and forget not his benefits. Like there's a benefit in the sanctification of your heart with sacrificial giving. That's right, Luke. Thank you for unpacking that. It is, um, we are, when we are generous, we are most like God, just like Jesus, who sacrificially gave himself up for us. And it was it painful? Yes, he sweated blood at, before he went on that cross. But he did it so sacrificially because he had a bigger picture in mind. A lot of times we miss the forest for a tree. We are, get so caught up with our finances that how do I budget for this? How do I, how am I uh, able to grow in my career, in my, in my finances if I give 50% of my, of my salary? How do I do that? But when, when all the while, God wants us to look at the big picture to where, where our heart is, there will be our treasure also, right? Patrick, could you unpack this verse where it says in the Bible, where your, where your heart is, there will be, uh, where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. Yeah, totally. Let me loop back there before I do. We're, we're talking about generosity and what it is. And I read this great quote by Peter Greer the other day where mm-hmm. he was defining generosity. And I think this is a beautiful, simple definition of radical generosity. That's what he calls it, radical generosity. So it's apropos for this thing. He says, it's trusting God's provision and using all we have to bless others. That's right. And I love the simplicity of that because I think there's three elements of this definition of what true radical generosity is. It's trusting God's provision. And that is so key, right? All over the world, there's this narrative of scarcity versus a narrative of abundance. And how do you break through the narrative of scarcity? Mm. It's not in us. It's in who God is. He is enough. So it's trusting God's provision and using all that we have. So whether we're in the Middle East, whether we're in Asia, whether we're in the United States, generosity is about all we have. We all have things that we can be generous with. So trusting God's provision, using all that we have to do what? To bless others. Generosity is always others focused. And I just love the simplicity of that. So when you say where your treasure where your treasure is, there your heart will be also, what we have to remember is that when we are generous, our heart goes with it. Yes. <laughs> whether it's our treasure, whether it's our time, whether it's our expertise, when we give, the natural response of our heart is to follow the object that's of our right. generosity. And so that's what that means. Jesus said, listen, if you're generous, whatever you're generous to, your heart's going to follow it. If I'm generous to lay on the couch watching TV every night, my heart's going to follow that, right? right. It's how I'm keeping my time. If I'm generous to, you know, uh, ministry, my heart's going to follow that ministry. So it's just a natural response of the heart in my mind. Yes, absolutely. I love that. Um, I remember when I was reading the um, Treasure Principle, um, it, he was also touching on that. He, uh, he used an analogy that really, um, really, um, hit me and he he was like well when you invest in a stock that you didn't even know existed what do you do every single day you pull up your uh, investment chart and you keep looking at it how it's performing why because your heart is going to follow that particular stock because you invested in it when we invest in the kingdom of god there goes our heart also it it, uh, it naturally follows that. I love what, what you said, and I, I, it just made me remember what I, what I learned from the Treasure Principle book um, by Alcorn, uh, Randy Alcorn. Um, Pat, uh, um, Kyle, I'm going to come to you um, with the question of how can we inspire others, our families, or even the next generation to be radically generous, not just a normal generosity, to be radically generous? Yeah, another great question. And I think very practically and very simply put, we have to model it ourselves. Yes. I think that the, you know, one of the greatest illusions uh, in life is to think that we could invite someone into a place that we've not been ourselves. 
And I think it just, it starts, it starts by doing it. Yeah. It starts by living, living a life that demands an explanation from the world. Uh, and that's what I, that's what I love, right? Is that there were a, a, a couple of years ago, Lily, I, I felt the Holy Spirit prompt me and uh, Holy Spirit said, history will reveal to the world if you believe in me or not. Mm-hmm. And that is, that is that North star. But I love what Patrick is saying. It's like, we get, we get our eyes on, we get our eyes on Jesus. We get our eyes on, on, on the faithfulness and the generosity of God. And the story that I love the most in the Bible is out of John six with the little boy with five barley loaves and, and two fish. And mm-hmm. what I love is that even, even Jesus in this context had to give thanks for his not enough. And it was in giving thanks for his not enough that it immediately became more than enough, right? And yes, it was feeding 5,000, but, you know, scholars say it was around, it was more around 12,000 because you had the women and the kids around. Yes. And so in that, I think it, I think that ultimately it just comes down to modeling it. What would it, what would it look like if, you know, mm. we could feed an entire nation? What if somebody had the natural means to, to purchase 12,000 meals, but they had the kingdom posture of God, I'm just bringing what I, what I have. You could feed an entire nation because of the multiplication of effect and on, on that seed that's sown. And so it comes down to modeling it, living it, and then challenging people into it. And I think what I have found over the last couple of years, especially with the work that I've done with Generous Life, is that generosity, the multiplication factor within generosity, when it's done in proximity to other people, is the name of the game. And we have found that people, when giving together, end up giving 30% more than they naturally would on their own. Mm-hmm. And so when we get pro- when we get in proximity to other generous folks, naturally we want to give more. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I love to do, is to help other people find their people to get attached to the needs of the world. But also, I think even more importantly, to focus then on the heart of the donor, yes. right? I would rather focus on the heart of the donor than the needs of the world because in focusing on the heart of the donor and how God has positioned that that person, the needs of the world, not, like the byproduct is the needs of the world being met, but in a really practical, pragmatic way. Absolutely. Love it. Focus on the heart of the donor. I love it. Um, Luke, um, we just heard from Kyle and Patrick about coming to um, the space of generosity with all that we have. Um, what, what would you say to a listener right now that is struggling with fear? Like, are you telling me with three kids and a wife and the house payment and the car payment, I would bring in all that I have to God? How do I feed my family? How do I do this and that? How do I save for my, my kids' college? How would you respond to that? Um, question um, to to those of um, our listeners that are stricken by fear when it comes to giving it all to God. Right. I mean, it's a tough one because I can't teach you that there's freedom in Christ. <laughs> you need to experience that. You know, there there is an immense amount of freedom in the joy of generosity. And so, uh, but practically speaking, I would say, we never saw a specific amount requested. You know, it, it, in fact, you, you see it over and over again in, in the New Testament that um, they gave according to uh, as their means. Um, but at least they got started. You know, for some, it was everything. Um, for some, it was what others would consider a little. Um, I would say what God says is test me in this and see if I don't open up the storehouses of heaven. Now, that's not prosperity gospel, but it is the freedom of serving one very good master because you can't serve two masters. You can't serve God and money. And so I would say as a means of collaboration and joy and and enjoying the ways of God and experiencing what it means to rest in in, in his way, specifically Jesus's yoke is easy, right? His burden is like, are we able to rest in that? Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. how do you know until you try, right? Like get, I would say, I know that's a kind of a, a bit of a coy answer, but I would say, give it a shot. D- don't, don't let perfectionism bury you. There's plenty of people out there who will say, well, you know, you need to, if you're going to get started, you have to go through this list of 20 things. I say, no, get, just get started and see how God takes care of you. Yes. I say, in this instance, put him to the test, as he says. 
Yes, amen. It really comes from a heart that trusts. It really, it, it, which applies on every aspect, every domain of our life with Jesus. But when it comes to finances, we feel like, um, Lord, you can have all the rest of the domains in our lives, the finances, let me handle it. Let me be in control of it. I'll give my tithes and offering, Lord. But when it comes to trusting him with all that we have, there comes a different dynamic of our relationship with him, different, different intimacy level that it requires that we would have with the Father to be able to give it all to him because he was the one who gave it to us to begin with. It's not th through our abilities or through our skills, through our educations or anything like that. If he doesn't want anything to happen, nothing will happen. So it is him who gives us the ability to gather wealth, to be able to have all that we have. Patrick, I want to be respectful of your time. I know that you dedicated 30 minutes of your time today to hop on here. Um, sir, would you give us one last answer before you hop off? And that is, now that we are wanting to really cause this movement, fuel this movement among Iranians that come in to their new faith um, with a very legalist mindset to where giving is nothing more than an obligation to God. We give a portion of it out of the abundance of our finances, not all of it. How do we uh, inspire them to give generously and radical generous lifestyle? How do we inspire them with a radical generosity? Yeah, so I heard this great quote. It says, stare at Jesus long enough and you'll become a giver. I love it. Give long enough and you'll become more like Christ. So if you are following Jesus, then when you stare at him long enough, you fall in love. Like how could we not fall in love with someone who loved us so much? That's right. right? And then as we grow to love him, the natural response is that we give. And as we give long enough, we become more like him. So it's a virtuous cycle. So if you are just a new believer, in Christ, you know, do it not out of obligation, but do it out of an overflow of love. Mm -hmm. Think about what he brought you out of yes. into. Absolutely. And the natural response of that is that we give out of love. And then as we keep giving out of love, he provides. As he provides, we love him more. As we love him more, we give more. And it becomes a way of life and not an act. I always think about generosity as an, it's not an act of giving, it's a way of living. And the way of living is it becomes a part of our nature. So start small, like Luke said. I love what Luke said. Is it don't make it too complex. I mean, wherever you are, whatever you have in your hand, it may be money, it may be relationships, it may be time, it may be expertise. You know, it's it, start wherever God's placed in your hand and say, how can I be a blessing? And trusting in God's provision, how can I be a blessing to others? As you do that consistently, it becomes a virtue in your life, and then it becomes second nature. It just That's becomes That is amazing. It really comes by practice. Um, thank you so much, Patrick. Again, I want to be respectful of your time. Um, whenever you, you would like, sir, you, you can hop off. And thank you so much for joining us and giving 30 minutes of your time today. We sure appreciate you. God bless you. You as well. Thank, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Um, Dr. Sherriot, I want to come to you, sir. Um, I want to ask you if you could share with us a personal experience of um, witnessing radical generosity in your own life. I have many, many examples to give. As I shared, I've, I've been on the receiving aid of, uh, side of the generosity than more than the giving, and I'm, I'm growing in that. But uh, uh, let me give two, two extremes, uh, big and small. Both are uh, important in the sight of the Lord. You know, uh, we started the satellite broadcast to reach out to Iran, and we were on a channel, and we were very evangelistic, uh, doing um, uh, church planting and all that. And the host channel, it was a Christian channel, but the host channel didn't like that. They wanted me just to do the... Uh, do a, a talk show. They said, don't, don't do that. They just, just give a good talk show. And I said, I can't do it because we are called to evangelize and plant churches. So we were kicked out of that channel suddenly and no 
platform to reach out to Iran. Any and questions? I was praying and asking, uh, asking the Lord, uh, are, are we done? Uh, are, am I done with this uh, media ministry? If done, I'm okay. Just a local church, it's good. If I know it's from you. But there was a, a vice president of Google at that time. This is 12, 13 years ago. Without knowing what has happened, she listened to the Lord and gave us $1 million to start this channel. I wow. mean, she did. We, so that that's uh, that's just the heart of God. Even without asking, mm. listening to God, God knew our needs. God what knew the call we had, and that really the reason we are here because of that start, that big start that she gave. So we could start a channel. We could have a studio, and let me yeah, go to the other extreme. I was speaking at the at the church. And I talked about Iran and persecution. And after that, an older lady, probably in her 70s, probably retired, um, obviously not very wealthy. Uh, her clothes were kind of old and uh, out of fashion. And and she came uh, very shy towards me at the end. And she had her hands, uh, fist, uh, her fist, uh, something in, in her hand and very... Um, shyly i would say just humbly mm -hmm. opened her hands and and gave me a 20 dollar that was just crumbled mm. and it was wet with her sweat you know and she said i'm so sorry this is all i have oh. you know for the salvation of irania and for me that was just a touch I never forget. Wow. And I will I never forget the value, the sacrifices people make small or big to give. Another one is uh, there was a, a donor would send us 75, three quarters every month. And uh, for, for a few years, and it just touched our heart that every dollar we spend at Iran Alive, somebody sacrificed to give. Right. And this lady gave give 75 percent so what i did at one time i said i want to keep that so i gave a hundred dollar donation to iran alive to buy that three quarters and we have it uh, on a frame and we have it on our in our conference room right now to remind us that every penny is from the lord every penny right. somebody has paid a price for it and we need to be a good steward on our end on the receiving end to use it for the kingdom of god Thank you, Lily. Wow, Pastor Amos, thank you so much for sharing this with us. Um, I just think of the impact um, that the woman that helped you initiate Iran Alive Ministries with a million dollars um, seat that he um, that she sowed in the ministry, the the impact of at least 100,000 people that have already reported salvation, um, that they, they have been saved through this ministry. How are they going to meet this woman in heaven and thank her? Thank her for the seed that she has sown in the kingdom of God through this ministry. Or the woman that brought a crumbled up $20, $20 bill, the impact that she has made um, on the on the lives of the Iranians that are receiving hope in in the utmost desperation in Iran, receiving Christ and being discipled, I just I just can't um, think of, of you know the impact and how they're going to meet uh, in heaven and be able to really thank her for that for that impact that she has made. I'm going to go to Emily. Emily is our team member who is going to be reading out some of the questions uh, from the um, attendees that they, uh, put on the chat for, for our panelists. So uh, Emily, can you please read out one of the questions either for Kyle, Luke, or Dr. Sharia to answer? Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, I just want to encourage anyone who's attending, um, if they put in the chat a question that they have, we would love to answer that. Um, but I wanted to start off with um, what... What is your favorite example of biblical generosity? And you know, that doesn't just include money, that's, that's time, that's relationships, that's, that's skills. Um, and how do, you, how do you live it out in your own life? Kyle, um, take it over, sir. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think I go back to I go back to the gener I go back to the the, the story in, in Genesis of of creation, that of of all the things 
uh, you know, God had created, God had created the world. He spoke life into existence and here he was, here he was, uh, he had us on his heart by breathing life into the dirt, breathing life into Adam. And that to me is the greatest form mm. of generosity in that ultimately we had Adam as the old man and then Jesus coming as the, as the new man. Yeah. And so for, yeah. for me, that all things that, that God created, um, he had us on his mind. Like we are his, we are his dream come true. That would be the first one. Second one is the one that I mentioned. I, I just, I love the, I love the, I just imagine this little, this little boy with his, with his sack lunch, right? His five barley loaves and two fish and him just coming with, with what he had. Um, and it was not enough. And he simply, he simply gave it to the disciples, gave it to Jesus. And then Jesus gave thanks and it, it fed all, it fed an entire community. And so yeah. that to me is, I, I just, I love that story. I, I'd imagine what it, I, I try to imagine what it would, what it would look like or feel like to be that, to be that little, that be that little boy to have a stranger come up and say, Hey, could I, 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 I need what you have. Do you mind giving it to us? And then hit him actually like, what would it look like to then here are my five barley loaves and here, here are the two fish that I was carrying. And in doing so, I fed an entire, my entire community. I don't, I like, I, I wish that I could know what happened to that little boy, that, that inflection point in his life. I, I, it would be beautiful to actually understand what having that viewpoint of generosity did for, did for that little boy and, and what he grew into. Wow. That's I love really that. good. I love that. I wanted to follow up with that too. Um, who to, to you um, or Luke or Lily or Pastor Hormoz, but who is someone that you admire and know personally that's radically generous? I know for me, um, that's my grandma. She led um, myself and, and four of my cousins to the Lord and has devoted so much of her time leading basement house church Bible studies. Um, and I know for the five of us, we would not have known freedom in Christ without her. So um, just wanted to open that up to whoever wanted to answer that. I can go and, and make a recommendation on a good book, actually, called Gospel Patrons. There's cool. a number of sort of unknown folks who came alongside what we would call giants or generals in the faith. Uh, take a look like these people. It's, it's a special portrayal of unity. And that's one of the things that's so cool about generosity is it shows the church working together. It really is the hands, the feet, the ligaments all working together. And so you see that in the Bible with say Priscilla and Aquila, for example. I mean, mm. uh, you have people alongside Paul, you have people alongside Jesus, you have people alongside the saints since the beginning of time. And, and, and we have a whole history of that. Gospel patrons is a very good example of that. Um, and I, I feel in, in my spirit that just to piggyback on Kyle's answer, uh, Cornelius is somebody that's been in the Bible that's been on my heart a lot over the last three weeks, mm. specifically because, I mean, he, he was a Gentile, he was a Roman soldier. Yeah. And his giving prayers came up as a memorial before the Lord, right? Before the throne, I mean, you have the throne, you have the seraphim, the angels, the worship, holy, holy, holy. And his giving, his generosity came up as a memorial. And based on that, God acted. So it was almost like an intercession. So like this was in his face, like, wow, this is so great. And things happened because of that. And so um, while we don't let the right hand know what the left hand is doing, God knows. And it is pleasing. And it's a, it's a, it's a pleasing incense to him and something that he thoroughly enjoys I wanted to ask you too, just to kind of follow up. Um, so how, how is like tithing different or, or the same um, as biblical generosity? Like how would you differentiate the true and how would you compare it? Well, let's remember that in the new, if this is for me, <laughs> then I'll just keep yeah, going. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but let's remember that, uh, you know, once Jesus came, you know, he pushed for a, a, a whole lot more. <laughs> yeah. than just sort of a, a religious tithe or a temple tax. And, and that is sort of my fear is that generosity can come with this stigma of a temple tax. It's just something that I have to do. And, and, and the, the next problem that follows with that is people say, hey, I've done my 10%. Now I'm yeah. done. Yeah. 
yeah. regardless yeah. of how God's allowed them to prosper after that. Mm. Tithing is a very good start. It's a very good start and it means the world to the Lord. It's beautiful and it's kind of like Sabbath. Yeah. It's very healthy for us, right? Mm. You do this like Sabbath is made for man. It's healthy for us. God has a vested interest in our souls and allowing us to thrive. Generosity is the fast track to a lot of great things. So sanctification, sanctification, getting yeah. involved in the kingdom advance. Um, you know, like, like uh, somebody uh, like Lily was saying about where your treasure is there, your heart is also, you know, mm-hmm. that's a weapon too. You know, maybe I do struggle with love. <laughs> maybe I do struggle with love for a certain people group or boy, I sure wish I cared about the poor a lot more. Well, one proactive step that you can take is starting to give to some of those places and then your heart will follow. Mm. I hope that helped. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Kyle um, or Pastor Hormoz, um, actually, I'm going to ask Kyle first, but is there anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, I think Luke uh, brings up so many, so many great points. Um, you know, and my, I have a simple prayer is, God, will you just increase my capacity for faithfulness? Would you, would you make me someone, would you make me an investable asset on behalf of heaven? Uh, we, you know, we, mm. we talked about the, the stock, right? If, if you invest in a stock, I mean, you are, you are actively engaged in, in the success uh, of that stock. Yeah. And I think oftentimes, you know, I, I, I pray for this, for this courageous capacity to look at the, to look at the needs of the world mm. uh, and in doing so, but it really comes down to modeling it. Yeah. It, it's, just start somewhere. And I do want to share one uh, story. I, I feel like one of the Titans uh, in terms of generosity is this 10 year old little boy that I met in Haiti. Uh, he was a street kid and uh, I was running a children's home at the time with, with 12 beautiful kids, but I'd always bring the street kids over, have them on the roof, do like these cool worship nights. And um, every time this little boy Jacob would come over for whatever reason, the food on his plate would like vanish. And I'm like, this guy's really hungry. Like, where the heck did this food go? I was like, there's no way he's eating this food this fast. And um, and then I started noticing that every time he came over, he came over in these like cargo, he had these like cargo shorts on. Hmm. And what he was, what he ended up doing and what I ended up finding out is that he was putting all of the food into his pants to yeah. then take back to his family. And there was one time where I, I caught him with a peanut butter and, and jelly sandwich and um, mm. he walked downstairs and I, I, I acted like I didn't see anything. And he went through and I just I love this imagery that he reached through the gate to give the sandwich to his older brother to take back to his mom. Mm. And that is what Jesus has done for us. Like we, we've yeah. broken down the wall and here he is like creating yeah. a pathway towards generosity where there's no obstacle and it's all around what we can give. Mm. And this little Jacob, I, I, I think about him all the time. And that just that picture of love reaches through the gate and generosity looks like taking what I'm like. And I, I love go back to the Psalm where they, they sowed with tears and they reap with joy in the Psalm. Yeah. There's a picture that I used to see in these Haitian mamas had their babies tied around their backs. And I Mm -hmm. actually remember seeing these these mothers like truly weeping as they were planting seed because the momentary need that they had to fill their hunger in their stomachs would have been to eat the seed. Mm -hmm. But because of the vision that God had given them, they they wanted to sow. So they sowed with tears and they reaped with joy. And in that, Mm -hmm. uh, I just, I think about then if when, if we, if we see with momentary vision, we're going to give with momentary resource. But when we, when we see with eternal vision, when we, when we get our, our minds wrapped around the things of Christ, yeah. we then end up giving with eternal seed. And mm. so that to me uh, was, always, was always just such a, such a challenging, convicting way of living. And it was, God, would you just increase my capacity for faithfulness? Would you give me this courageous capacity to look yeah. at the needs of the world and say, God, how am I positioned to help just put a dent in it? But putting, in a dent, putting a dent in it just begins by starting small. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I wanted to follow up with that. Um, but with, with the work that you do, what, what are some misconceptions um, 
about radical and biblical generosity, um, Kyle, that you hear from um, those who want to be generous um, or don't know how, or, or maybe honestly they've been hurt in the past? Um, what, what are some of those misconceptions and how do you specifically address that? Yeah, I think the misconceptions, I think Patrick mentioned it, uh, you know, the beginning of this webinar is that it's, it's only for the, it's only for the wealthy. Mm. Um, and I, I think the misconception is, is that giving, giving is this duty. It can't be fun. I, I, I have loved to see people who were just giving generously because they felt like they had to, it became this obligation. It, uh, you know, there was tax incentives, there were all of these things. But I think the one of the misconceptions is, is that if like, what does it look like to practically be a cheerful giver and yeah. for joy to be attached to our to our giving? And I think oftentimes I have found that in many people's lives, they have this tendency to shrink back mm. and not to the darkness because they're looking at what they can give outside of what other people are giving. And then in doing so, they just don't give at all because they don't feel like it's enough or they don't feel like it's going to have that much of an impact. And so I think the misconception is, is that you can't start small. You can't start somewhere. Yeah. And that to me is what I have found in being in proximity to other generous people ends up kind of putting full blown assault and charging into darkness together that it actually happens through community. And, and that's mm -hmm. what we have, that's what we have seen. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Hormoz, I wanted to ask you one last question uh, before we kick it back to Lily. Um, but how how would you, as a pastor, um, whether to Americans or Iranians tuning in, how would you advise someone um, to use discernment when they are giving generously? Well, you have to. I think you are you are a steward. You have to. Uh, not just give, but make sure where you give, you know, you, uh, the act of giving, we talked a lot about, but uh, we need to be aware. And, uh, and many uh, times uh, the uh, word of God talks about people who are serving. They, they, we need to, we need to support ministries and, 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 and people who are very productive for the Lord. They're, they're genuine. They're doing the work. So, we have to do our due diligence, and sometimes people say, uh, "Just give, don't don't worry." I think that the complementary part of giving is uh, to be wise. It's like an yeah. investment. The best uh, the best givers I I know, the, uh, probably you know, the, the, the uh, large donors. They look at this thing like an investment. They they do the due diligence. They say they look at the return mm -hmm. for on investment ROIs. They say, I "Want my." giving to have the largest impact. So there is a, hmm. there is some uh, duty or responsibility on us to make sure we give to the right place where in fact the word of God and, and the gospel is preached and the kingdom is being established. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Absolutely, thank, thank you, you so, so much for, doc for that, Dr. Sherry. It's, uh, um, it's all about the ROI, isn't it, in the kingdom of God? Like we want to sow where we, uh, where we are able to reap the most harvest. And so I want to I ask Luke uh, this, and, and, and that's because, um, Luke, you are not just generously supporting Iran Alive Ministries. I know that you are a supporter and a strengther of um, so many different ministries um, that you're fueling. Can you touch on um, what what you look for in ministries that you are you are um, uh, contributing to when um, and how did you even land on Iran Alive Ministries? Yeah, well, I agree with a lot of what Dr. Shariat said, you know, but it does start with collaboration with the Holy Spirit. So, if you are feeling a nudge in a certain direction, it is wise not to ignore that mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. voice. And so I, I know this sounds very uh, back to basics, but learning to discern the voice of the Lord is the first step. That's right. And so I would look there. I would secondly, definitely look around uh, ROI uh, as you're starting to discern uh, the direction that you're looking at. I would look at what ministry is doing and how they're doing it. Um, certifications are a good place to start there. There are some 
organizations out there who help do some of the heavy lifting for you on, you know, is this organization handling mm -hmm. their finance responsibly? But I want to say all this with one big caveat, which is that all of heaven rejoices when one person comes to the right. Lord. And so I love ROI. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love efficiencies and optimizations. But I also want to remember that we are after the one just as Jesus was. And so I saw that with the Ron Alive very quickly. Um, I, you know, I'd come to the Lord. I started giving in, in various ways. I'm a tech worker. I work in the marketplace. And I, in discerning with the Lord, I knew that I wasn't called to go on to the so-called front lines of say, you know, inland China or Ron, the Lord wanted me to stay in my job and that was okay. And that's what I would say to a lot of the folks on the phone too, is you can be a marketplace leader and be a part of the kingdom game. You can get some skin in the game. And, and that's where my head was, at. okay, so how do I get involved? And, you know, I was just surrounded by uh, persons in my life and I learned a lot about Iran and, and a lot about the history. And I fell in love with, with many of the traditions and the people. And so I took that to the Holy Spirit and said, I love these people. I love what's happening over there. Now I'm starting to read about uh, the dreams and the salvations and all of these wild things where I can see that the Lord has his eye on a specific geography. And remember, I'm trying to not only discern the voice of the Lord, but learn his ambitions for certain areas, but also his ambition for my life in certain areas. And so I said, okay, well, you know, how can I, you know, th th this guy here in the States get involved in what the Lord is doing in Iran? And, and I very quickly found Iran alive and, and fell in love with the work. And then we just got started, right? We, we just got started and, and we, we, we watched and we monitored and we learned and, 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 and you know, if, if everything went south, my conscience would have been completely clear <laughs> and I would have found another way to, to support what Jesus is doing in Iran. But I'm loving what Iran is alive is doing and uh, not just the efficacy, but the efficiency and the results that are occurring here. That's right. Thank you so much, Luke. Um, we sure appreciate you. It's, you touch on something that we often talk about here at Iran Alive Ministries. We talk, uh, we talk about in order for us to transform a nation, we really need to um, have an impact and influence seven mountains of influence in, in the nation. And we don't really need to be, you know, an apostle and a teacher or a pastor or, you know, a minister or a missionary. We don't need to be any of those. We don't need um, our names to bear these titles to make an impact in the kingdom of God. You said you, a uh, white guy in Austin, Texas, in the United States, are making an impact in Iran and in the Middle East. So wherever we are in the marketplace, wherever we are in the body of Christ, uh, with whatever resources the Lord has blessed us with, we can all do something to expand the kingdom of God. Uh, my desire is for us to go back and really reactivate the early church of Acts 2 and 4, to where the believers are of one mind and one heart, and their only desire was to expand the kingdom of God. So if we can all be of one accord and have one agenda, and that is to expand the kingdom of God together, to partner with God and partner with one another, we can make a difference in the kingdom of God. I know that there are many, many organizations, many, many ministries, as Luke mentioned here, that we can aim our generosity towards. And um, as a listener right now, you may be wondering, okay, Lily, what's my takeaway from this generosity webinar? I want to encourage you to whatever it is, like wherever you are, there is a next step for you. If you need to start with tithing, start with that. If you need to go with tithing and giving your offering, start with that. Whatever your next step is, the Lord knows that. And I want to encourage you to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what is it that you want me to do at this point? What is my next step?
in the kingdom of God, if it is to change my heart to where giving is no longer an obligation, but a joy, an opportunity, Lord, help me have that heart for you so I can partner up with you. And I'm here, you guys. I want to. I want to let you know that I will send an email right after this um, webinar with a link to my calendar. I am more than happy to speak with every single one of you that want to know how do I take the next step? How do I take it to the next level? How do I lean in in the community that I am a part of to serve better, to, um, to give better, to just use my talent in a way that would honor the Lord? I'm here as a resource to you. I'll be happy to have one-on-ones with you. I'll send a link to my calendar so we can schedule some time together. If you want to um, know more about our work here at Iran Alive Ministry, and you want to become a bigger supporter, bigger partner with us, I'll be happy to share more information about that as well. But at the end, we have three minutes, and I would like for Kyle to lead us in the closing prayer and to pray for everyone that joined us today to really receive the revelation knowledge of what radical generosity is and help them through the power of the Holy Spirit to really take the next step, take the next step, whatever that may be for them. Beautiful. I'm honored. Thank well, you, Kyle. Let us pray. Yes. Holy Spirit, come Lord, invade our minds, invade our thoughts. Lord, I thank you for this time. I thank you for Iran Alive Ministries. I thank you for the radical movements of generosity that's going to spread across the globe. Lord, I thank you that the, that the cities that were ruined are being rebuilt. I thank you, God, that you're increasing our heart for capa uh, capacity for faithfulness. God, that you are hijacking any belief that would be inferior to that which that love was inviting us into, God. And I pray today would be an inflection point that those that have been on the sidelines of generosity would get in the game, whether it's big or it's small. God, that we would get in the game that, God, you have, you have modeled what it is like to be generous and so, Holy Spirit, I pray for the ministry of your Holy Spirit in our minds to change the way that we think. And God, that it would be your kindness that would draw us into changing the way that we think about generosity. And God, that we would just get our hands on, on generosity, that we would become like the early church where there was not a need that wasn't met. God, that in our communities, in our families, it would be illegal for poverty to exist that God, you would eliminate poverty from our vocabulary. And so Holy Spirit, we thank you. I thank you for all the many lives. I thank you for all the families, all the souls that are present on this call. Uh, I pray God that there's a ripple effect of your goodness, of your generosity that's going to spread about the earth. And it's those that just simply say yes. So God, we thank you. We acknowledge your yes towards us and we return that yes to you. And we just say, thank you. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for modeling us. Thank you for creating a blueprint for what life could look like, a yielded life. God, Holy Spirit, thank you for being our counselor. Would you counsel us? Would you yes. take us back to the drawing board and teach us how to be generous? Yes. God, would you teach us how to be generous? And we thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, for everyone present. God, we, we just pray right now. I just pray for great dreams to be distributed. God, reawakenings, creative strategies, creative ideas. And God, I pray for just an abundance. I pray right now, God, that you would soften the hearts of people, even under the sound of my voice, yes. that not one word under this call had not yes. fallen under divine inspiration and that there would be radical generosity that would, yes. that would invade Iran Alive Ministries and that they would never be in lack and that money would never be an obstacle yes. to the vision and the mission that you put in front of them. And God, I thank you for the wisdom of God. And I thank you that wisdom would always outwork the vision that you've put inside of our hearts. And so we thank you for that. And we thank you that this is all and only made possible by the blood of Jesus. Amen. So we thank you for that in Jesus name.
Amen. 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 Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Kyle. Thank you, Dr. Sherry. Thank you, Luke. <laughs> Emily, thank you for all of you who attended today on a weekday. In midday, you guys took the time to join us here so we can talk about the characters of God, talk about radical generosity, and how to take it from normal generosity to radical generosity. Again, I'll be following up with you right after this webinar. I look forward to speaking with every single one of you and help you take it to the next level. God bless you. Thank you.